Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want us to have a conversation on the journey of waiting for a child. Grab a coffee, grab some juice, and let's talk. So I have a lovely guest with me today, uh, Tina, welcome to the channel. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, introduce yourself, tell us who you are, are you married, you know, what's the story? Okay, um, thank you first of all for allowing me to uh, share my story mm. with the people out there. My name is Tina Priscilla Malisa, yeah. and yes, I'm married. Mm -hmm. I've been married uh, for nine years, making ten this year. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to be here. Of whom, yeah. Yes, of whom, yeah. <laughs> of whom, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, good to have you. Yes. So, you know, I just want to share your story with people out there because I know so many people have something to learn from you. Hmm. How long did you wait to have a child? Um, we got married in 2014. Mm. And uh, when I do the count, we conceived after five years of waiting. Mm. Yes, five mm. years. Wow, five years is such a long time. And we know Mother's Day is here, yeah? There are lots of people out there who are on the journey of waiting, and we want to encourage them. How was that journey like for you, first of all? Well, I would say that in the beginning, I, I didn't think that I was actually waiting. Mm. Because when you get married, you have an assumption that everything is going to work out in a certain way. Mm. So I had everything planned out in my mind mm. and I had figured probably by the first year we would have our firstborn. Yeah. So that's the kind of picture that I had. Mm. But um, down the road, one, one year down the road, there was, there was no baby. Mm -hmm. So we kind of didn't um, worry so much. Mm. Uh, 2014, 2015. Now, around 2015 or towards the end of 2015, mm. we got a bit concerned. You're like, mm -hmm. yeah, we got a bit concerned. But then also you have lots of people asking you questions around the third year or the second year. Yeah. And this can get you thinking. Mm. So some of those concerns got us thinking. And uh, a few voices came in here and there saying, maybe you need to go and do a checkup. Mm. Maybe you need to find out if there's something that is preventing you from conceiving. Mm. And uh, we are believers in Jesus Christ. Yeah. So our faith was still strong at mm -hmm. that point. Mm. And we decided, we said, well, let's listen to the voices around mm. us because mm. we were surrounded by a number of people at yeah. church, mm. our family members, my aunties. Mm. And we decided to start trying out mm. around 2015. Okay. Yes. So that's about maybe two years? About two years. Yeah, before. Mm. So when you, you know, you went to the doctor, mm -hmm. how was that? Like, what did they say, you know? And tell us more about that. Um, well, I did see a number of doctors. Mm. The very first one I saw, I think, diagnosed and said that I had a cyst. Mm -hmm. And the suggestion was that they remove the cyst. Mm. Uh, but of course, talking to a number of women around me, older women, they said, oh, cysts are common. Mm. You don't have to operate a cyst. You've not yet had a child. Mm. So if you start having surgery at this point, when you, when, when you eventually get a child, you'll have a number of surgeries mm. after that. So do not get into surgery so soon. Mm. So we dismissed the cyst and um, uh, we prayed about it. That one I must say, we prayed about it. And uh, the next time I did a scan, the cyst was not there. But this was with a, with a different gynecologist. Okay. Yeah. So mm. we got a second opinion. Mm. And this time around, the, the doctor was saying, no, there's no cyst. I'm not seeing any cyst. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I just want to hear from you mentally what's going on with you. Because I know it's, it okay. can be something. Yeah. 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 I think the journey got tougher as mm. I saw more doctors mm -hmm. or more gynecologists. So in the beginning, I was seeing um, gynecologists, but maybe without the word specialist gyn. Mm. And um, people would refer me to different guys. You could try this one, go and see this one. So I was in different lines yeah. at a number of times because mm. usually guys in Kampala have long lines. Mm. So um, finally, one of my friends who had a similar challenge, we had gotten married around the same time, yeah. told me we needed to see a specialist guy. Mm -hmm. So my journey of seeing a specialist guy started around 2016. Mm. And um, of course, we had to run tests. And at this point, I learned the different names of different tests and what they meant, what the doctors were looking for. I felt like, oh, okay, I now know these things. I can talk to other people. Mm. Well, um, 
no, one of the tests I was asked to do was one where they do a, a hydrotubation. Okay. Uh, they, they, no, they don't do a hydrotubation, but they check out to see if your tubes are functional. Mm. I always thought, well, I'm normal. I have normal periods, so yeah. my tubes should be normal. Mm. So I did go, I got the scan, took it back to the guy, and they did a number, a, a number of tests. Another test was called a vaginal scan, transvaginal mm. scan. Mm. And for this one, they were testing to see if um, other organs were, you know, in the right place, whether there's no intraversion or anything. Mm. They have those medical terms that yeah. they use, so I may not be accurate in mm. the terms. But um, the scan for the transvaginal scan was okay, but the scan for the tubes was not okay. Mm. So I took this back to the specialist and he said, oh, you have blocked tubes. Okay. And the specialist said, both of your tubes are blocked. Oh. And um, he said, if we are to succeed in this, we have to do what they call a hydrotubation, mm. which is um, a, a procedure that you do every after your periods. So it had monetary implications because as mm. a couple, it meant that every month we were visiting this specialist mm. and our budget had to include that sum of money where we would mm. budget and say, okay, hospital mm. or, you know, hydrotubation. Yeah. So I started the journey of hydrotubations and mentally I would say, it's a bit uh, strenuous. So this is done every month? Every month oh, after your periods. Yeah. So the guy gives you a date and says, okay, your periods, mm. when the periods are done, mm. you come in two days after the periods or mm. three days after the period. I've forgotten mm. the exact count. Yeah. But you needed to come in before the cervix closes mm. so mm. that they're able to, you know, wash out whatever it is that they need to wash out. Wow. So, so. You, when you mention, um, of course, it took a toll, of course, it's financially. Mm -hmm. I would like to know with your partner, <laughs> what it did to their relationship. Did it affect you in any way? Did it make yeah. you stronger? What went on with the relationship? Because I know so many people, sometimes some people can go into blame. It's you, it's yeah. me, it's mm -hmm. not. Why did you, like for you, what was your journey uh, yeah. with the marriage? I think I would say that I have a wonderful partner. Mm. He's very supportive. And I think for the many people that I talk to, I tell them that it is important to have a, a supportive partner. Mm. And for the men out there, it is important to support your spouses. It is important for you to know that the problem could actually be on the other side. It might yeah. not be the woman with the problem. Mm. It could be you. Mm. And if you are the one with the problem, then you need to be very cooperative mm. and do a number of tests alongside your wife mm. so that the journey doesn't seem to be single-handed. Yeah. So I would say that my husband was very supportive. Mm. And um, he supported me by speaking to me mm. or speaking into my life. Mm. And he didn't pressure me. Yeah. And I think for me that was a plus he, for him. Yeah, yeah. He didn't pressure me in spite of the cultural pressure or mm. the social pressure and all that was going on. He would sit me down and tell me, you know what? I know that you're not barren. We will have a child. Wow. But on the other hand, my faith was dwindling mm -hmm. because every time I'd go for hydrotubation, I would think, oh, maybe next month. It's things are coming. Yeah. Will happen. Mm. So there is a way the tests and the different procedures raise your faith. And then every time you fail or you feel like you failed, mm. then there is that setback. Mm. And you may sometimes go into depression yeah. if you're not very careful. Yeah. Yeah. So he was supportive. Mm. And for some of the visits I had in hospital, he actually did go with me mm. and he would wait out for me because after the hydrotubation, you have moments of recovery. Mm. He would sit out in the sofas at the hospital and wait for my recovery yeah. and drive me home. Mm. He was quite supportive. Amazing, yeah. amazing. And when you talk about, you know, your faith was dwindling a bit, mm -hmm. tell us more about that because, you know, so many times as, you know, believers, you know, yeah. things, sometimes things are not going well. We yeah. can say, you know what, God does, does not work, yeah. you know. <laughs> what was the journey like for you? You know, Lisa, if I go into the faith bit of it, I may decide to preach a sermon, but mm. you know, I'll kind of narrow it down. Yeah. I would say that in this journey of um, trying to conceive, faith mm. is very important mm. and very fundamental. Mm. And your faith is always a fallback plan because if you do not have um, God with you, you do not have a voice speaking to you, a higher power speaking to you, mm. sometimes you may give up. Yeah. Sometimes God speaks through people. Mm. Sometimes he may speak to you as you read the word. And I would say one of the scriptures that spoke to me so often was Isaiah 54. Mm -hmm. I think the first line says, Sing, O barren woman, you who has no children. Mm. And, you know, uh, widen your, your tent. And um, I think I found strength in scripture. Mm. I also set up a 
prayer life that was unbreakable. Yeah. I, my prayer life really grew mm. because then I realized that this journey was personal mm. and I needed to work on myself. Mm. The journey of um, uh, trying to conceive is not really all about the medical mm -hmm. side of it. Mm. You need to work on yourself. You need to work on your inner man. You need yeah. to work on your inner self mm. because it involves bitterness, mm. sometimes self-blame, mm. sometimes even self-rejection. Mm. And um, it is important for you to have faith and let the faith speak into those situations. Yeah. Forgiving yourself and knowing that giving birth is not in your power mm -hmm. or in your will, mm. but it lies in the hands of God. Yeah. So for me, I would say that faith gave me that part of it mm. and it kept me strong mm. and it kept me going. Yeah, because yeah, so. I think sometimes we can give the doctors all the power. Yeah. Like you said, sometimes after the medical procedure, things are still not working. Yeah. You know, sometimes we think mm -hmm. it is them and that is it. Yeah. But God has an aspect in there and we shouldn't forget it. Yeah. Amazing. So, so walk us, uh -huh, continue the journey. So, uh -huh, did it work or not? We want to know. <laughs> yeah, the doctor gave me a number of um, appointments for hydrotubation. Mm. But I think there is one that I went for, I think he had said about four sessions of hydrotubations. Mm. And I think I did only three. Mm -hmm. And on the third one, I gave up. Wow. I didn't go back. Mm. So on the third one, he discovered I had what they called a polyp. And he was saying the polyp was hanging somewhere between the uterus and I don't know which other organ. Mm. But just after doing the hydrotubation, he said, oh, I see a polyp. Because usually you're, you're half sedated and not entirely sedated. Yeah. So I could hear what he was saying. Mm. And sometimes the procedure could be a bit so painful. Yeah. So he was saying, oh, I see a polyp. And then he said, this is a small one. Let me do it. It's a small procedure. Mm. So he did what he called a polypectomy. Okay. Okay. He did what he called a polypectomy. And I think a few days after that, I was bleeding. And the bleeding was not letting down. Mm. So I got a bit anxious and I called him and he said, oh, you, you can come over and let's have a look at it. Mm. So we went back. He had a look at it. He was quite concerned and he was able to stop the bleeding. Mm. But I think because of the emotional pain and uh, bodily pain that comes with the medication i was tired yeah so i sat down and i told my spouse i think i'm tired mm. i told him the medications are stressful they have an implication on my emotional well-being so i don't think i want to continue going to see the doctors mm. and um, i decided to change my diet I decided to try some products for healing naturally. Mm -hmm. I decided to do exercises. I I changed my diet in terms of well, increasing iron, mm. you know, iron foods rich in iron. Yeah. Uh, drinking lots of water. Mm. But also, I changed my mindset. Okay. And I think that for me, mindset change was the winner. Mm. I told myself that children are a gift from God. Mm. And the moment I understood that concept. Mm. I stopped putting pressure upon myself. Mm. I think the mistake that many women make is that they put a lot of pressure on themselves. Mm. And they, they try out different styles in mm. bed. I know. And oh. they try different herbs. Mm. They try different things and they doctor get so to doctor, we, it. doctor. You know, you to try doctor, everything. You try everything. Yeah. So I decided to enjoy my marriage. Mm. My husband and I attended a number of um um um, marriage uh, sessions, yeah. fellowships. Yeah. We also talked to older people or people that had had a similar experience mm. and they spoke into our lives. Mm. We decided to go out, have fun. Yeah, enjoying the season enjoying together. Enjoying the season together. Mm. And we decided, oh, maybe this is a season that God is giving us to enjoy ourselves before we yeah. get into the hustle and bustle because of running after it's serious. a yeah. Mm. yeah. So we enjoyed ourselves mm. and we took our eyes off having a child because to be to tell you the truth mm. it is not actually the main thing in marriage huh. that is very hard to hear yeah mm. the main thing in marriage is your spouse mm. and yourself mm. enjoying each other mm. spending time with each other and then the children come in as a bonus as a gift as a gift mm. and we don't ask for gifts they are sent to us ho huh. guys mm. Mm. it's tight yes yeah, so mm. at the right time God will send you that gift. Mm. And at the right time, he sent us the gift. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Light bulb moment is Lisa. Did you know that female dragonflies fake their own death to avoid male advances? Some of you, you're being like dragonflies. Fake faking. Give some. <laughs> hey.
So finally the gift came. Yep. First, I just want to know your reaction when you mm -hmm. found out because you must have been over the moon. Like, how was it? Oh, well, um, the way I found out was a bit strange mm. because we had stopped trying. Mm. We had stopped trying. We were just enjoying ourselves, mm. loving each other, having fun. Mm. And then, well, my period didn't come for huh? one of those months in 2018. Yeah. And I decided not to run up and, you know, buy a, a pregnancy kit the way yeah. I always did. Yeah. Because we had decided that we're just going to enjoy ourselves. Mm. If the pregnancy came, well and good. good. So um, I was doing a, a full body check, a medical checkup, because mm. I was due for travel somewhere. And then the doctor said, wait, when was your last period? And I said, um, mm -hmm. well, I haven't seen it and I'm still waiting because sometimes it's late. It delays. Yeah. I was used to the delay. Mm. And then he said, I think you need to go and get me an HCG. Is it an HCG mm -hmm. test? So I got him one. And then he said, my dear, you're expecting. Oh. And wow. I called my husband to mm. give him the news. He mm. drove from wherever he was and came to find me. Mm. And of course, we were hugging. Mm. We were happy. We were excited. We were, it, excitement was all over the place. Yeah. So that was 2018. And that was our first successful, uh, that was our first uh, baby. Mm. Um, unfortunately for us, that baby didn't make it through. Mm. At around 26 weeks, I, I had a miscarriage. Oh dear. Uh, the baby was born and she was in the incubator for about two days. Mm. I was able to see her, I was able to express some milk for her, but um, apparently the lungs were not yet fully well, developed. Yeah. So she went to be with the Lord. Oh. And maybe one thing I needed, I need to say, or one thing I need to tell the ladies is that if you've been having a journey of um, difficulty in conceiving, mm. when you do conceive, please have someone to, have a medical specialist that you're seeing mm. to check on you, to make sure that the pregnancy is forming well. Yeah. Because the successes sometimes also have, have some challenges that mm. need to be dealt with. Mm. So what I didn't do is that I, I was not checking in with my guy so regularly. Mm. Well, I was, but I wasn't so cautious. Okay. So I think there's some things I missed out mm -hmm. on. But um, after losing that first baby, our period of mourning was, was quite brief. Mm. It was quite brief. A number of women in my life who were speaking to me told me, you need to conceive as soon as possible. Because if you do not, the grieving period is longer. Mm. So in order to make the grieving period shorter, I, I, I kept on telling my husband, we should not give this up. Because it is a bit hard to lose the first pregnancy yes. when you've been waiting. Yeah. And then try again. Mm. We could have gotten discouraged. Yes. But my husband still encouraged me. Mm. And well, we kept on, we didn't try so hard this mm. time around. Because at least we knew I wasn't barren, as you know I had thought I was before. Yeah. So this time around, within one year, I was pregnant again. Wow. That was 2019. Mm. I was pregnant again with our second child. And without trying anything, just the usual? Just the usual. I did try. Mm. I did, I, this time I had a specialist gyne. Okay. And I did go in to see her. I did change gynes mm. after losing the first baby. So the second gyne I saw was a specialist as well. And uh, she put me on treatment. Mm. But the, 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 the treatment was making my periods a bit too heavy and too painful. Mm. And I didn't want to go into depression again because of treatments. Yeah. So when she put me on treatment and it didn't work, I didn't go back. Mm. I decided to wait. Mm. And I didn't want my body to have so much medication in it as well. Yeah. So, boom. I was okay. again more pregnant. Wow. And mm. this time round, of course, yes, we were excited mm. once again. Yeah. We were very excited. Mm. And we told ourselves, this baby must live. Yeah. Because About, I was going to ask, was there a fear? You know, when you've yeah. lost a child, now you have a new one, and then you're, there, is, there may be <laughs> fear of, how did yeah. you cope through that? Um, first and foremost, because of the fear, we did not announce this pregnancy to many people. Mm. Because I think people had gotten disappointed alongside, you know, with us. With we you. were also disappointed with the, with the first pregnancy. Mm. So we didn't tell people, like, we don't want anything to happen. Yeah. And then once again, there's no baby. Mm. So around about um, eight weeks, I got what they call, um, I think it's a, a subchronic hemorrhage. Uh, it's when you get a bleeding, mm. but the bleeding is happening inside. Mm -hmm. So it was not happening outside. Mm. How did I get to know? I got some minor pains, okay. abdominal pains. Mm. And one of my friends with a guy said, run and see your specialist now. No. But we were staying a bit far mm. and it was during the lockdown. 
so the movements were not easy. Mm. We decided to go to a nearby hospital and first get an, an opinion from that doctor. Yeah. When we got there, the guy told us this baby won't leave. What? And he said, um, with the bleeding that is happening, the baby can't feed. So since the baby can't feed, with time the baby will be starved and it will um, self-terminate. Mm. So it, it, it is what, it's what they call like a self-abortion. And I remember in that room, my husband went still, I went still, Yeah. but I had such a hope. Mm. So when he was telling us, you may need to go home and wait for this um, to happen, just this wait to happen. Mm. I said, no, is it possible for us to call my specialist in Kampala mm. and you, you can talk to him mm. out of respect? I, you know, I just asked him yeah. because I didn't want him to feel like we did not trust, trust his, his opinion, mm. but I had faith. And my faith this time was so high up there. Mm -hmm. So he said, fine, call her. I'll talk to her. So I called my guy and then I gave him the phone and they talked. I don't know what they discussed. Mm. So he wrote down some prescriptions and sent me out to the pharmacy. I got the prescriptions. Mm. And then on the phone, the guy, uh, this same, uh, after they had spoken, um, the guy I was seeing at that moment, the one who was saying the baby wouldn't leave, said, she says you should be on bed rest. Okay. Don't move. Mm. So I went home. I became what you'd call um, an invalid. Mm. So I would just lie down in the sofa. I was fed. I, they would bring the food in the morning and everything. Mm. I wasn't lifting heavy things. So I would wake up, get out of the bed, go lie in the sofa. Mm. And, you know, I just put on summons after summons. I had a few people who'd come in to check on me. And um, I'm really grateful yeah. for those people. Yeah, well, I love that you yeah. you are listening to someone, so you're yeah. feeding the I word, was you know, on the word. because I it's was life. It's the one that's feeding yeah. on the word. Mm. And um, one of the people that came to see me was Dr. Ruth Senyoni, mm. and she would drive in, surprise me, mm. and just come in and uh, to check and see if I was actually on bed rest. Mm. Because sometimes, as women, we have the hustle and bustle of the of home. life. Yeah. And I think one time she came in and found me cooking, and she said, "Why are you cooking? Mm. You're supposed to be on bed rest." Mm. So she told me, "Can you please go back to bed?" Mm. That's how she sounds when mm. she's really serious. So I actually did go back to bed, mm. and somebody else completed the cooking. Yeah. So well, um, to cut the long story short, mm. it's a very long story. I kept on going in for medical checkup because the pregnancy was a risky pregnancy. Mm. It had been tagged as a risky pregnancy. Mm. My doctor mentioned that we would do a, a McDonald's stitch mm. in the event the, that the hemorrhage that was going on on the inside would yeah. stop. Okay. So right now, we're all under pressure, mm. waiting for the bleeding to stop. Mm. And she had given it up to 12 weeks. Oh. So I think about, um, I think, when we went in in the 11th week, because I was going in every week mm. for a medical checkup, when we went in in the 11th week, the bleeding was still there. <sighs> and I was sitting mm. at the reception of that hospital, I broke down and cried. Mm. Broke down and cried and I sent, I sent one of the ladies who was working with me, I sent her a message, I sent mm. her a message and I said, they've said the bleeding is still there. Mm. So now we had one more week before the 12th, 12th week, week. Mm. and she had said if by the 12th week the bleeding hasn't stopped they have to remove the baby because <sighs> then the stitch can only be done mm. on the 12th week mm. so um we went back home and we prayed and we prayed mm -hmm. we prayed mm. we would wake up in the middle of the night and we would pray mm. we were not sleeping mm. we prayed we sent messages to friends and mm. asked them to pray. We had one week to go. And I just one want week. to ask, where was the place of God in, in this whole journey? Because I'm seeing a bit of ups, but more downs. Like, where was the place of God? Did you see God come through in those small... Sometimes it's just small things and you just feel like God is present. Did you feel that? Yeah. I think I would say that God was present. Mm. Because like I said in the beginning, Lisa... There's a place where you get in sync with yourself and in sync with your God. Mm. And you have this relationship that is so personal. Mm. And you can ask him questions. Mm -hmm. And you can have a chat. Mm -hmm. So I had gotten to a place where I wasn't asking him any more questions. But I was in agreement with whatever he would say. Mm. And I would say, God, if this is your will, mm. well, do your will if it glorifies your name. Yeah. So I got to a point where... I, I would talk to him and he sent me to a portion of scripture and he told me, you're having a son. Mm -hmm. 
and then he told me you will name him Jedidaya. And I had never heard of the name Jedidiah. Mm. So uh, I, he told me to go a portion of scripture in the book of uh, First Samuel. Mm. And I went to that portion of scripture. And then I discovered it was the name that was given to um, Solomon mm. when he was born. Mm. And it means God's beloved. Mm. So I said, okay, Lord, if you love this child this much, then you better preserve him. He's going to live. So when I got the name, I said, God cannot give me a name and not give me a child. Mm -mm. I relaxed. Mm, mm, mm. I relaxed. Mm. I stopped worrying. Mm. I would eat my food, mm. enjoy myself, and be happy, waiting for the twelfth week to happen. Yeah. So when we went in for the twelfth week, uh, we found a different sonographer. Yeah. Who was doing the scan this time round, and when he was doing the scan, he was humming a song. I think there was music in the background. It was worship music. Yeah. And I was like, okay, hmm, some good news here. Yeah. And so when he was done, I asked him and I said, do you see anything worrying? And then he said, there's nothing worrying. I see a normal fetus. Everything is normal. Mm -hmm. no development. Mm -hmm. And I was mm. like, do, like you, do you see any bleeding? And I was like, bleeding? Which bleeding? There is no bleeding Which here. bleeding? I almost jumped off the bed. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, are, are you sure? <laughs> and he said, there's no bleeding here. And mm. I was like, is it because it's a different sonographer this time? Yeah. Maybe he doesn't know my medical history. Mm. But he was, he was just, you know. Chills. Dancing around and, mm. and he said there's no bleeding. Mm -hmm. And he gave me my results. I went to the guy and she said oh. she said, Okay, Priscilla, McDonald's stitch. We can even do it today. The ice. Yeah. I even have chills. He said we can wow. she said we can do it today. Mm. We didn't have the money, so we did a little bit of running up and down. She said, I'm giving you one day to get this money. Mm. My husband made calls. He looked all over the place. Mm. And by the grace of God we got the money. Wow. And the next day I went in for surgery. Mm. Now even the surgery had um, a point where when you're signing they say if anything goes wrong in the surgery, you lose the baby. They, when they have to choose, if yeah. they have to choose. Yeah, ah. so you're, you're signing in, you're, you're giving a, your acknowledgement, mm. and there's a phrase that was saying, if anything goes wrong with the procedure, the baby could die. But I was saying, you know what, Lord, I'm going in. Mm. So we went in, within a short time, the procedure was done. Mm. We got out, and then she said, okay, now you'll take some days of rest, and your time of bed rest is up. So my wow. time of bed rest ended. Wow. And um, there we were. Mm -hmm. We were waiting for Jedidiah to be born. Ooh! Amazing, amazing. That's so good to hear. Yeah. And I just, okay, for our followers, <laughs> <laughs> we have. <laughs> What's yeah. happening? Are you saying something? No. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is there are people in the audience who are distracting me. They are praising Jesus. <laughs> so we know that Jedidiah is here. Uh -huh. How old is he? Jedidiah at the moment is um, two years and um, eight months. Mm. And he will turn three in August. Wow. He will be starting school. Ooh, ooh. Amazing. Yeah, he's a very lovely boy. Mm. He's everything I dreamt he would be. Yeah. We would actually have conversations with him when he was in the womb. Mm. I would talk to him and I'd be yeah. like, we can't wait for you. Mm. We're going to spoil you. Mm. We love you to bits and pieces. Yeah. And yeah, we love him to bits and pieces. Ah, amazing. <laughs> now your journey is, is just yeah. beautiful. It's showing the work of God in yeah. your life. Yeah. There may be a woman out there, mm -hmm. you know, who, was, who is in your same situation, who was in your same situation, or is yeah. waiting, or is just feeling like, I can't do this anymore. What yeah. would you tell her? Um, well, I would say that um, it is important for that woman to understand that the power to conceive is not in her hands. Mm. It's in the hands of God. Mm. The power to conceive is in the hands of God. Mm. Leave it to God. Yeah. Do your part and leave it to God. Mm. It is, it is important to seek medical advice, mm. see a specialist, mm -hmm. know what's wrong with you if, in case, if anything is wrong with you anyway, because sometimes there's nothing wrong with you. Mm. Sometimes God has ordained it that you will have a child later than your peers. Yeah. While, if, while some people have children after two years in marriage or um, a few months in marriage, some women have to wait a little bit longer. Mm. So in this wait, love your God. Mm -hmm. Love your spouse. Yeah. Love yourself. Mm. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Mm. You can only do too much. Yeah. And let God do the rest. Amazing. Yeah. And then now, to the us, 
yeah <laughs> the us who are in your environment <laughs> who are, are surrounding you yeah. what do you have to say to them mm -hmm. um when someone is going through this season yeah. like mm -hmm. what should we know you know maybe sometimes we say things out of lack of knowledge yeah. you know for saying muze ko what what like you know yeah. sometimes we don't know but what would you love mm -hmm. to tell people mm -hmm. who are not in the situation because we do not know what you're going through how should we talk to you how should we mm -hmm. approach you guys like you know if you're going through something what should i say what should i say what are those things okay um i would say that i think people need to be kinder yeah in their verbal comments mm. sometimes you get people asking you questions such as are you on something mm. are you using a certain pill mm. and you've actually even never seen any pill like is it because you did this that uh -huh. So we got mm. questions such as, did you take something on the honeymoon? Yes. Um, did you decide to just wait? So you mm. did a procedure and we said, no, mm. we are not doing anything. We are waiting upon the Lord. Mm. So support these people mm. emotionally and physically. If you can visit them and mm. check on them, mm. please do so. Mm. Talk to them. Mm. Check on them. Mm. Sometimes we forget that they exist. Mm. If you invite them for a birthday party for your child and they don't yeah. turn up or a baptism, sometimes be understanding mm. sometimes I I, I i i i used not to go for baptisms mm, or the pain i wouldn't go for some birthday parties mm. because when you go over there everyone is like oh where's yours mm. and then you don't have anything to show mm. so sometimes they don't come for these gatherings because they don't want to or they don't wish you well mm. but the emotional strain that comes with seeing other people with their lovely babies can some, yeah. sometimes be a bit too a difficult bit much, to yeah. so uh, at this point i also want to encourage the women while you're waiting actually love other babies Okay. When you start loving them, mm. then sometimes I, I feel like nature responds to you. Nature responds mm. to that call. Mm. I personally decided to visit people in hospitals, mm. check on their babies. I made shopping for babies. Mm. And I also bought a tiny garment and kept it in my house. And I would always speak to the garment and say, one day you'll be one. One day you, you my, my son or my daughter Amazing. will wear this garment. Mm. So getting to a point where you wish others well, mm getting to a point where you love other children mm. because you're not only a mother to the child that you carry in your womb mm. you're a mother to nations mm. you're a mother to the many children out there so as you're waiting for your own baby love other babies preach it love other babies mm. they are your babies yeah oh so i actually have goosebumps oh you get to a point mm. where you realize that you're not only a mother because you carry a child in your womb mm. but you realize that every child around you mm. is actually your child oh. when i got to that point mm. i realized that i was ready mm. to have my own mm. 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 amazing amazing yeah thank you so much tina for being here for sharing your amazing story we loved having you guys i hope you've been encouraged inspired you know because this yeah. journey can take a toll on, on women, yeah? yeah? And be gracious to one another. If you see someone going through it, a word of encouragement. No stress, no pressure. We shouldn't be feeling pressure, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, you know, yeah. share this with a mother out there, yes. someone out there, so they can be encouraged, just like you've been. My name is Lisa Kusima, and I'm here to inspire. <laughs>